who does not like to save money especially our food <laughs> definitely not me or do you want to spend all your money on food this year did you even know how much you spend on food every month i'm sure if you calculate it you'll be shocked what if you could save like 20 percent on food every month as a certified foodie that i am proud one for that matter i have forcefully learned how to save money on food and i am here today doing the lord's work to show you these tips and tricks that I learned. Because we need to have these extra savings to spend on other things like assets that will generate more money for us. Especially for people that are in their abroad. So, stay with me today as I share these tips and tricks with you and hopefully some of them you know them already and you're already practicing them and some of them are new to you and you will put in the action to start doing them from today. Once again, welcome back to my channel. If you do not know my name by now, my name remains Esther. And so, the first tip I want to share with you today is probably something you already know, but you are not yet practicing. I am here to ring it in your ears again that you should have a meal plan and a budget. However, you want to have it is left to your style. You can have it weekly or monthly. I prefer the weekly basis. Your meal plan guides your budget because you would know what you need to eat for the month or the week. You can assign costs to it based on your last purchases and that guides your budget. And in that case, you also have a realistic budget. Not having a budget of 500 Naira, you eventually end up spending 600 Naira because you have not worked with current prices. The fact that you have a plan ensures that you don't buy things that you don't need, number one. That is one of the reasons why we overspend. We end up buying a lot of things that we don't need just to stock up our fridge. Eventually, they become waste and then we trash them. Forgetting that all these things we actually purchased with our hard end money. One of the things I also love about meal plans is it helps me avoid eating junks. Sometimes we give in to the temptation of junks because we don't know what to eat. But if you have planned ahead, rather than having to think, you just know that, especially if you do meal prep like I do, I do meal prep on a weekly basis, I don't need to think so much about what I want to because all my food for the week have already been prepared and stocked up in the refrigerator. At the time I need to eat, I just need to, ref I just need to microwave my food and my food is ready. I have shared a video on how I do this. You can find it on the channel. I have also shared a meal timetable that will be helpful to you guys. It's a four week meal timetable. If you have not downloaded it, I'll link it in the description box so that you can find it your meal plan guides your grocery shopping list i know that this is important however sticking to that grocery list is much more important sometimes we go to the store and we end up buying things more than what we have planned so next time you go to the grocery store and you find yourself almost going in that direction let my voice ring in your ears that that is the work of the devil the devil is trying to make you deviate from your plan. Do not give in to that temptation. <laughs> However, on a, on a more serious note, guys, what I do in my case, number one, is to avoid going to the grocery store when I'm hungry. I realize that when I'm hungry, I tend to overbuy things. Like, I do a lot of impulse buying when I'm hungry. If I this drink, I'll just... I'll, quickly consume it at checkout, let me buy this burger, I'll consume it at, and you know, eventually I, I end up buying a lot of junk. If that is not your case, it is fine. Another thing I recommend is to have an accountability partner to go shopping with you. In my own case, that is my husband. It's the voice of ring with me when I'm trying to buy things that are not on my grocery list because sometimes when, it was like, when I pick things, it's like, are you sure you need this thing? And when it says that, that's like a reset button for me. And then I then evaluate it again. I'm like, ah, it's true. I don't really need this thing for now. So I just drop it. But the bottom line around this is to be disciplined. Be disciplined and stick to your meal plan and your budget. The second tip I have for you is to research coupons and take advantage of sales period. There are various sites that offer discounts, cashback and coupons when you buy in store or online. Some of these coupons can be on, a, on your total purchase or on selected items. A good one that I use is Rakuten. Rakuten gives you cash back when you make purchases through them. Sometimes online or, or, or in store. Like affiliate companies that earn money when they direct people to different websites and stores. So these stores pay them and they offer you a part payment of what they have received. This for me is one of the good ways to save money. So I'll leave a link down below for you to sign up with Rakuten. You'll see the instructions on how to save money online and in store. Another thing about Rakuten that works for me is 
being notified of lower prices whenever I want to purchase an item, especially online. The third tip I have for you today is to learn how to cook. One of the reasons why you're spending so much on food on why your food budget is high is because you keep ordering in, doing takeouts, eating at one restaurant today, eating another at another restaurant for lunch, dinner and everything. All these amounts that you're spending, sometimes it might be like hey, it's just $5, $10. If you had all of those amounts together for a day, it can cook you your entire food for the week. So learn how to cook and if you don't know how to cook that is why i am here and other food bloggers on youtube we are here to do the lost work to teach you how to cook different delicious meals that you will enjoy and will edify and bless and nourish your body so there is no excuse about not knowing how to cook this year you need to buy something substantial with your money not only food because the annoying thing about food is once you eat it you will excrete it you will not even remember the food you ate five days ago but if you save your money and buy some other things that are tangible you see like a house or a car or anything you will still be able to see those things to face and you can account for what your money is doing that's why a lot of people even feel like they can't account for their money because you keep spending money on food and spending money on food is not an investment because you are not going to have anything to show for it that you can even sell or improve on to make more Another money. Another tip I have for you today is to switch to healthy food options. Cut out the sodas, cut out the snack, cut out the chips, all those other things that are not nutritious or beneficial to your body and you're spending money on them. Please stop them because you spend money on them, they, they make you hard weight. Eventually, you spend more money to lose weight either through the gym or weight loss oh, resistance. Well, arm our health like consuming too much sugar taking soda you know some people can take soda three times a day why like why do you want to enjoy yourself do you want to enjoy, especially as an adult so i think you should begin to evaluate your food options these things are not good for you yet you spend a lot of money on them the money that you could have diverted into something else that will be beneficial to your head so, and i want to encourage you to even do a one month challenge to test this out all the money that you used to buy all these unhealthy food options save them either in a piggy bank that you have or in a separate bucket in your bank account at the end of the month see how much you would have saved now evaluate within yourself if you had spent that money would you remember the things that you bought that should be a wake-up call for you. I have for you today is to explore clearance section at the store. The foods at the clearance section are usually foods that are close to their best before dates. And so rather than making losses on them, if the store feels they will not be able to sell them off by that date, they sell them out at lower prices before those dates. If you evaluate that you'll be able to use up these items before their best before date, I recommend that you buy them. However, if you feel like you will not be able to use them up, you don't need to buy because you will end up as waste in your own pantry and in your refrigerator another tip i have for you today is to sign up for loyalty and rewards card or membership cards especially in the united states like you have costco cards even walmart has membership cards there are so many grocery stores that offer all these membership cards some at a cost some at no cost take advantage of these two to save on your grocery with some of these membership loyalty and reward cards you are able to buy grocery items at lower price than you would have bought them without those benefits like i remember one time that we used to buy at one store before we didn't know that that store had a loyalty card so we we're always buying things at their full prices but the day we realized it because i assumed the amount of savings we we're having and the loyalty card was free it was free imagine something that was available for free and not knowing about it so do your research about the places you buy from is there a membership card available ask your ask the attendant some of these stores have so ask your attendant when you go grocery shop also take advantage of sales period on on this membership cards like there's some membership cards that i have right now that i did not pay for because i took advantage of sales period so this is something that you should bear in mind and look into so well. the next tip i have for you is to control or reduce your food consumption. Here you need to do some portion control and watch what you eat. Talk about cutting out your unhealthy food. And even with the healthy options that you are buying, you need to ask yourself, do you need as much of that quantity that you are consuming? Like you need to ask yourself, the five meats that you have put on your food, do you really need to eat them now? Like at once, at a go, like do you really need to eat them? The three chicken you want to have for lunch with your other carbohydrates, do you really need to consume them together? 
Like, what benefit would this serve for you, especially as an adult? What kind of lifestyle are you living? Your lifestyle that's active to be able to burn out these things that you are eating. If not, you don't need them. Reduce your food intake. You do a portion control. This rice, let's reduce it. So before, if you've been cooking three cups of rice to consume at once, why not reduce it to two? If you used to eat five pieces of meat before, why not reduce it to two? Or one i know it might be hard but rather than just having an abrupt abrupt change you can do from like five reduce it to four with time you learn how to eat with three minutes two minutes and you're saving yourself some money and also helping yourself to eat better next tip i have for you today is to shop farmers market and buy food in bulk that is for people in the united states some of these farmers markets especially in the united states they usually have fresh food items at lower prices than what you will find in a store. If you find Lagos, markets like Mile 12 and other big markets in Lagos usually sell these grocery items at lower prices. So buy them in bulk. The caveat around buying food in bulk, however, is proper storage. You need to ensure that you have a means of storing the food. I would also recommend that for sealed items that you buy items that have their expiry dates far out. Don't buy an item that will probably expire in two months from the time you are buying it and you are buying that in bulk. For, for other perishable items like banana and plantain, what we do is we buy a mix. So for banana, you can buy a mix of ripe and unripe. So ripe for immediate consumption and unripe for later consumption. And what I do is when I notice that uh, this plantain, I don't need it on time and is already getting ripe, I cut them up and I freeze them in the refrigerator. So that's for a country where there is light. If there is no reliable power supply in your country, maybe that option is not for you. You can consider other means of storing food like drying. For vegetables, what I do is to dry them and put them in ziplocs for later use. Like I have some vegetables that I've dried for over three months now and they are still very much good to go. Another tip I have for you is to use your leftovers to create new meals. Don't trash them, maximize them. Sometimes we open our pantry, we open our fridge and we feel like, ah, I don't have food in this house. Whereas there are some items that are there that probably have consumed and you feel like, ah, this one will not be enough to make any recipe. Why not gather everything together? And, and for this, you need to be open-minded to create new recipes. Some of the recipes I have created for myself, they are inspiration from my leftover items in the refrigerator, in the pantry. So be open-minded. Maximize your leftovers first before you go grocery shopping. So another way I save money is by making my own sauces and my stock. It's in America that I heard that people used to buy beef broth chicken broth. When I was in Nigeria, I don't know people used to buy all those things. <laughs> but for me, what I do, I even have a dedicated container for stock, for broth. Sometimes you cook chicken, you boil meat, and you realize that you don't need that broth at that time. There might be a time that you will need it and you will not have it. So have a dedicated container and, and freeze that up so that whenever you need it, it will be available for your use rather than going to spend extra money to purchase that. So for sauces, I have forcefully learned how to make different kinds of sauces now. Recently, I even wanted to buy uh, mackerel in tomato sauce. But I went to the store and a lot of the products I found had this warning on them, like cancer warning. I'm like, I had no choice. I had to come back home, buy the mackerel and other things that I would need, do my research, and I made my sauce. In fact, the quantity I got from this sauce was more than the quantity I would have got from the one I was buying at the store at a lesser price. So, the last tip I have for you today is to have your snack and food on the go. So if you're going to work, you're traveling or you're going out, ensure that you have your snack in your bag that you have taken from home. You don't need to go and be spending extra money at the vending machines to buy things you don't need. Sometimes if you have a uh, fruit, say a banana, carrot or something, have them in Ziplocs to carry with you. Like those are healthy snack options that you can take. So you can save yourself some money instead of going to buy things at the vending machine that are really not good for you all right so that is all i have for you today which of these are you already doing and which of them are you going to start doing or are there other things outside these things that i've mentioned that you're already doing that you would love us to learn about please leave them in the comment section i'm sure that a lot of people would be willing to learn from you as well if you have watched this video up to now you are the real mvp and a round of applause to you i hope that you have enjoyed this video and it's been worth your time I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay healthy and keep living the good life.